In this interactive figure, we will explore Taylor polynomials. When the figure opens, a cubic polynomial is displayed. The graph is given as the blue curve, and the formula for the cubic polynomial is given on the top left. p sub 3 of x equals 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial. I will create a sequence of polynomials by sliding the slider that says order. So right now it's displayed as an order 3 Taylor polynomial, order 4, order 5, order 6, and when it was order 4, that was a fourth degree polynomial, order 5 gave us a fifth degree polynomial, order 6 was a sixth degree polynomial, and so on. And these are all Taylor polynomials. So what makes these Taylor polynomials? They approximate another function. In fact, this is the function here, f of x equals e to the x, the exponential function. And these polynomials are approximating the exponential function. I can click the checkbox down below, show f of x, and that shows the function e to the x. That's the dashed line in the picture. So the dashed line is the graph of e to the x, and the blue line is the graph of my second degree polynomial, second degree in this case, and I can change the degree by moving the slider for order. And right now, with order 2, this quadratic polynomial, that is an approximation for the exponential function. Now it's not a great approximation everywhere, but as long as x isn't too far from 0, the polynomial yeah, kind of looks like the exponential function. Their, their y values are pretty close. If I go too far to the right, then the polynomial and the exponential function start to diverge. And if I go too far to the left for x values much less than 0, then the polynomial and the exponential function don't look much alike. But as long as x isn't too far from 0, then the polynomial and the exponential function, they look pretty similar. I can make that approximation even better by increasing the order. For my third degree polynomial, 1 plus x plus x squared over 2 factorial plus x cubed over 3 factorial, the approximation is a little bit better. I can go a little bit farther to the left and a little bit farther to the right of 0, and the, the two functions match up. Degree 4 is a better approximation, degree 5, degree 6, and so on. So as the order increases, as the degree of the polynomial increases, the approximation gets better and better and better. The polynomials make better approximations for the exponential function. So what makes them good approximations? Here is the idea. I'm going to take the order all the way down to 0. The order 0 polynomial is just the constant 1. And the constant 1 is not a good approximation at all for the exponential function, except at x equals 0, because at x equals 0, the constant 1 is the same as the value of the exponential function, has a value of 1. If I change my order to 1, then two things happen. They agree at the y value, that is when x equals 0, they both have the same y value, but also the line, that is the polynomial, and the exponential function have the same slope. They have the same first derivative. You can see that the line is tangent to the exponential function there. Order 2 polynomial now they have the same y value when x equals 0, they have the same first derivative, and they have the same second derivative. And in fact, this is the meaning behind order. It tells me how many derivatives do they have in common. If I take the, say, order 5 polynomial, then the polynomial and the exponential function have the same y value at x equals 0, they have the same first derivative, second derivative, third derivative, fourth derivative, and fifth derivative. Now I need to make a careful point here. My fifth degree polynomial and the exponential function, they don't have the same derivative. They are different functions. But when I plug in x equals 0 into first derivative, second derivative, third derivative, and so on, then when I evaluate those derivatives at 0, I will get the same answer. Now let me go back to, say, order 2. I have a second degree polynomial and it is a decent approximation to the exponential function as long as I don't go too far away from x equals 0. But what if I wanted a good approximation right around x equals negative 1? 
I can graphically display this by dragging the point from the origin down to x equals negative 1. And now the polynomial that's graphed by the blue line is a good approximation for the exponential function close to x equals negative 1. The formula for the polynomial has changed. We can see in particular this quantity x plus 1 and x plus 1 squared. And as I change my order, order 3, order 4, order 5, the polynomials approximate the exponential function centered around x equals negative 1. Here's a little trick. If you want to see what the later terms of the polynomial look like, you can actually click and drag the formula for the polynomial over. See how it looks. In this interactive figure, we can also uh, look at some different examples. There are several examples that come loaded. There's the sine function. Cosine. Whoops. 1 over 1 minus x. Arc tangent of x. one over x squared plus one and e to the sine of x. So we've discussed the basic idea behind Taylor polynomials and how Taylor polynomials approximate functions, but what is the actual formula for the Taylor polynomial? At this point I've displayed the Taylor polynomial of order n generated by f at x equals a at the bottom of the screen. And the formula is somewhat complicated. It uh, takes a little while to get used to, but the key idea is that there are three factors that go into creating your Taylor polynomial. The first factor is f. What is the function that you want to approximate? The function that's displayed on screen, for example, is e to the sine of x. So that's my f. That's the f that appears in the formula. The next question is, what is the x value around which you want to approximate the function? Uh, as it is on the screen, I've set my value at x equals 1, and so th this polynomial approximation approximates uh, e to the sine x around x equals 1. And the third element to consider when creating your Taylor polynomial is the order. How many derivatives do you want the polynomial and the function to agree at? So that's our n in the expression for the Taylor polynomial.